All right, so I must apologize that these last couple of weeks, well, this being the second week of it, have been a little bit of the uh, political nature. I, you know, that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes, I think. Um, in my opinion, in between election cycles is when um, is when we should be speaking more about politics because it seems to me whether it's a midterm election or a main general election the a lot of people just get on that bandwagon towards the towards the end and they don't pick up on the details that are important but what I was going to do is take a point by point response to Senator Paul's response to the State of the Union address this information is a little bit dated but there's a couple of things that uh, that Dr. Paul says here that I'd like to speak on, and um, without further ado, here we go. Good evening. I wish I had better news for you, but all is not well in America. America is adrift. Something is clearly wrong. America needs many things, but what America desperately needs is new leadership. I've only been in office a short time, but one thing I've discovered is that there is no monopoly on knowledge in Washington. The best thing that could happen is for us to once and for all limit the terms of all politicians. We already limit the president to two terms. I think we should put limits on the terms of Congress and infuse our government with fresh ideas. Before I ran for office, I practiced medicine for nearly 20 years in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Liberal elites fly over my small town, but they don't understand us. They simply seek to impose their will upon us from what... Okay. <laughs> um, I could do a whole video on this opening statement. Um, to, to be a standing senator and to propose term limits on senators and Congress... I, I, it swells my heart with pride. I think it's a great idea. When, when he goes on to make the point that there's no monopoly on, on intelligence, what is it that he said? Let me back it up here a little bit. Understand us. They simply seek to impose their will. Liberal elites fly over my small t ideas. Ah, our... I'm killing you. <laughs> we already limit the president to two terms. I think we should put limits on the terms of Congress and infuse our government with fresh ideas. Before I ran for office, I practiced medicine for nearly 20 years in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Liberal elites fly over my small town, but they don't understand us. They simply seek to impose their will upon us, from what insurance we can buy to what light bulbs we can use to how we generate electricity. Most of us in flyover country, and I suspect many who live in our big cities, think that those in government take us for granted. Those of us who are actively pursuing the American dream simply want government to get out of the way. It's interesting how he segued the point. Um, I was trying to go back to when he was talking about there being a monopoly on, on intelligence or a monopoly on ideas. Um, I took that to mean that there are people who are doctors and and other type of of industries that require a great amount of, of education and a great amount of knowledge that because of you know if, if our fear for term limits has to do with well there aren't enough qualified people that, that's just a ridiculous point but it's weird what his little speech here does I don't know it kind of is going off the rails at this point when he's talking about oh little little bold bold and green Kentucky I'm all folksy and everything else you know he's a second generation politician and you know his dad served well over 20 years I've had other videos about this I mean these these people are uh, you know they're power brokers and I I dig I dig what they stand for there are certain policies that they have such as uh, on war and, and the economy that I totally, totally dig. But, you know, there, there's other things that um, that I don't dig, and I'm, I'm happy to share them. But let's, let's go on. For those of us who feel separated 
and distant from the American dream, we don't want to be perpetually talked down to, forgotten, and left in perpetual poverty. Many are discouraged that the gifts offered by liberals have not generated wealth, but rather perpetuated poverty. People want a way out, not fake concern and baubles. The war on poverty is 50 years old and still. Black unemployment is twice that of white unemployment. Income inequality has worsened under this administration, and tonight, President Obama offers more of the same policies, policies that have allowed the poor to get poorer and the rich to get richer. Pitting one American against another is not a pathway towards prosperity. The president is intent on redistributing the pie, but not growing it. He misunderstands that the bulk of America wants a bigger pie. Okay. This is going to be a bit of a semantic argument, but at this point of the video, and I'm kind of kind of leave it at that, I'm having trouble listening to him because of the p sound. The p, every p. I feel like I'm watching Mr. Popper's Penguins, and I'm waiting for Polly Popper to, to pop the pumpkin seed of the pumpernickel. I don't think he's doing it on purpose. This is me just being a jerk, but um, there's only so much I can take in one sitting. When I was... When I was originally planning this series, <laughs> I had toyed with the notion of doing this all in one shot. But obviously, I don't have the maturity to be able to, because I can't, I can't take seriously someone's obvious bid for power. There's another P word for you. Does Dr. Paul really stand for the, the middle America, the people like me, the people like you? I don't know. I would love to meet him. You know, I, I'd essentially love to meet his dad. Um, he had a couple of books that have really changed my life, and for that I very much respect him. Um, that he didn't support his dad and endorse his dad when his dad was still running for president, when he was still in the running now, makes me look sideways on anything that Senator Paul has to say about topics. There are some obvious things that he's very brave to speak of, and I believe that he's the closest thing that we have to things like campaign finance reform, things like term limit for Congress. But who's really to say? You know, if if he's a if he's a libertarian, I don't think uh, many libertarians are actually for uh, campaign finance reform. So he he's just a very interesting hybrid. Certainly not as that, but. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, let me know if I'm off the rocker. You can definitely agree with me about being immature, about it being caught up in how we started using the p sound too much. But <laughs> it is what it is. Anyway, this has been your Daily Dose of Lamb Dog. Looks like we've got, oh, I, I promise to get more of the video in later on. We'll, we'll try to keep this to three parts. See you all tomorrow.